later today. Um, Katie, should I go get a car wash? I really need one right now. <laughs> it's a 30% chance of okay. seeing an isolated storm in Denver between about 12 and 3. You should be in the clear, but you can't rule it out. Better chance of seeing rain across the plains as we get into the evening hours. Right now, though, it's mostly clear skies. A really beautiful start to our morning statewide from the mountains to the plains. It's dry. But later on this afternoon, we are expecting the chance for isolated thunderstorms, especially south and east of the metro area. We'll warm through this weekend. Today, highs in the upper 70s and then 80s return for Saturday and Sunday. Currently, we're nearing 60 degrees downtown. We're at 60 degrees into Greeley with 40s and now some 50s moving into our mountain towns. Your hourly planner is we get through the mid-morning hours by 10 o'clock, 65 degrees. Daytime highs reaching the mid to upper 70s. Scattered storms likely over the eastern half of the state, mainly east of the I-25 corridor out across Lyman, Burlington for this evening. We'll warm up and dry out for Saturday, and then a stormier weather pattern will move back in through early next week, Jason. And right now we do have some heavier traffic on I-70 on that lower section. I'll be talking more about some of the progress that's being made here on I-70 coming up in about a half an hour. You can see the drive on 270, I-70, very typical stuff for us on that westbound side, eastbound side. No problems for us on 270 or I-76 or I-25. Had that earlier crash, you might still see some of the remnants of it way over to the side under I-76. It was just drawing some looks. There is still a uh, delay here on Iliff at Peoria, mostly on the eastbound side. It's our second crash in there this morning. That's causing some delays right in that uh, very usually very busy intersection 225 as you saw is busy but the west side of town is pretty good we do have a little pocket of slowing right around 92nd in the uh, church ranch area but not long lasting for you and we continue to follow breaking news this morning uh, firefighters continue to make progress on a fire at an abandoned building in denver's ballpark district and it's sending smoke across downtown in the Rhino District. This is on Arapahoe near Park Avenue and Broadway, and firefighters have been uh, dumping water on it for hours now, and really from all angles. Uh, the smoke has thinned out significantly from earlier, though, uh, but it's still out there, and obviously the street is blocked off in that area. We are working to learn what started the fire. There was no damage to Great Divide Brewing, which is right next door. Also, we got an update on a large police investigation that we showed you last hour from Lakewood. This was a shooting between two people. Police were called to an alley behind this Conoco station at West Colfax and Sheridan. Officers say the driver of an orange truck got into an argument with another man and shot him several times. That victim was rushed to the hospital and we're working to learn his condition. Meanwhile, police are still looking for the shooter. Well, now to the new record for a gallon of gas in Colorado. AAA says overnight gas prices went up five cents to 4.49 a gallon. That's 25 cents more than a week ago. So this morning we're diving deep into the rising cost of gas. Yeah, because there have been several major developments mm -hmm. overnight on efforts to lower the cost, hopefully, including how OPEC will change oil output across the world to meet the gas crunch. And President Biden is about to travel overseas to seek help from a country he considered an outcast. But the stakes are high. Uh, why experts say we might be heading for the worst energy crisis in a generation. And we'll dig into some local resources to help you stretch your gas money further. First, though, OPEC has agreed to increase oil output by 50% in both July and August. It will increase production by 648,000 barrels per day. The group is slowly getting back to a production target of 10 million barrels a day. That was cut when demand died early in the pandemic. President Biden is expected to travel to Saudi Arabia later this month. That will be part of an international trip for NATO. Much of the meeting will focus on convincing the Saudis to release more oil. President Biden has not engaged directly with the crown prince there since he took office in response to the killing of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Some energy experts worry we could be headed toward a worse energy crisis than we saw in the 1970s and 80s when people were waiting hours in lines sometimes to fill up their gas tanks. While we produce a lot more oil nowadays, demand is skyrocketing. But while we're paying those high prices in the metro, just be glad we don't live in Aspen. Hmm. Someone sent us this video of regular going for over $5 a gallon and diesel 5.99, uh, premium gas up over 6.20 a gallon. So how can you stretch your gas budget? Denver 7's Colette Bordelon talked with some local experts about ways to save. More than $5 a gallon in Aspen, but check it out right here at the Sinclair across the street on South Colorado Boulevard, almost 4.80 a gallon. With prices like that, 
You might be one of many who are thinking, how do I get around without my car? One way you could do that might be carpooling with people you've never met. Now, Denver has a program called the Way to Go program, and it helps people find more eco-friendly ways to get around, like finding a bus route that best fits your life, riding a bicycle, or walking, if that makes sense. But they also offer matching for a carpool service. Their best advice for saving money is to be open-minded when it comes to how we get around, since they see two big problems that come from a city so dependent on cars. Traffic congestion and air pollution. Um, air pollution is not good for our health. Traffic congestion is not good for our mental health. Nobody moves to Denver because they want to sit in traffic. They want to get to their destination and have fun. Yeah, I definitely don't want to sit in traffic all day, but if carpooling is not for you, you might want to look at how your car's doing, how you're taking care of it. And if you have good tire inflation, Gas Buddy says that could extend your mileage by up to 3%. If you avoid hard braking or acceleration, it could extend it by up to 33%, which is huge, honestly, with prices like the ones we're seeing. But if you are interested in carpooling or finding a bus route or a bicycle route to try and get to work, go on over to waytogo.org. Live this morning, Colette Bordel on Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. Investigators in Oklahoma now say the man who shot and killed four people at a medical center was targeting a doctor he had blamed for the pain he was in after recent back surgery. The shooter left a letter saying he intended to shoot Dr. Preston Phillips. Another physician, a receptionist, and a patient were also killed. The gunman bought his weapons the same day of the attack. Meanwhile, there are more funeral services planned for today in Uvalde, Texas. 10-year-old Jace Luovanos, 10-year-old Jayla Silguero, and 9-year-old Jacqueline Cazares will all be laid to rest. And now a Texas state senator says the commander overseeing police during the shooting was not informed of the panicked 911 calls coming from students trapped inside the classroom. Senator Roland Gutierrez wants Texas Governor Greg Abbott to call a special legislative session in response to the shooting. President Biden is calling on Congress to take action against gun violence once again. In an evening address to the nation, he called for a ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is here. And Jessica, you took a look into what lawmakers on Capitol Hill are really likely and realistically going to get accomplished. Yes, that's right. We see two sides of the coin. First of all, is President Biden asking for some gun control measures that might not be so popular with the GOP. But there are some bipartisan senators who are trying to get something off the ground as the president pleaded for some progress yesterday. It's time for each of us to do our part. It's time to act for the children we've lost, the children we can save for the nation we love. Let's hear the call and the cry. Let's meet the moment. Let us finally do something. The president called for specific actions to help stop mass shootings, along with a ban on assault style weapons and high capacity magazines. He pushed for expanded background checks and red flag laws. He also wants to raise the age to purchase assault style weapons from 18 to 21. Overnight, the House Judiciary Committee did advance a package of gun violence prevention measures. That bill does include the age increase, but not an assault weapons ban. Senators are working Working on a separate bill, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said it focuses on mental health and school safety. The Buffalo and Uvalde shootings underscore a problem we've seen over and over again over the last 30 years. Mental, mental illness and school safety are what we need to target. McConnell saying he hopes to present that bipartisan idea next week, and he has hopes that it could actually pass the Senate. I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. We'll see. Thank you, Jessica. Following high-profile mass shootings like we've seen in recent weeks, both gun sales and trainings uh, tend to see spikes. Jacqueline Clark, the owner of Bristlecone Shooting Training and Retail in Lakewood, tells Denver 7 her store alone has seen a 60% increase this week in enrollment for its concealed carry training course. Uh, this is part of a trend that researchers have been following for years. This uh, graph from the Brookings Institute uh, shows FBI data on background checks for firearm sales across the country. And after the mass shootings in Sandy Hook, San Bernardino and Parkland, as well as unrest during the pandemic, that's when we saw those spikes, uh, higher levels than normal. 
The owner of Colorado's first black owned gun club told us in the last month he's seen an increase in black people owning guns. We've seen a significant increase of individuals who want to come and learn because, you know, we feel like, hey, man, like we don't want to be sitting ducks. We don't want to be soft targets. Anubis Haru there says mass shootings make people more open to owning and learning how to use a gun and racially charged attacks only make them think about it more. A Colorado group, meanwhile, is trying to help people combat the uh, sadness and helplessness they may feel after these shootings. We're all survivors right now of all of this stuff going on. You might not have been there, but you're seeing the news, you're hearing these things, and you might be one of the people who's not desensitized to it. Now, Megan Dearman and Della Curry are relaunching a concept they created right before the COVID lockdowns. Their nonprofit is called the Colorado Resilient Life Center. They hope to offer care and healing programs, classes and counseling, and the goal is to make it all free of charge. Well, after a big win last night at Ball Arena, what the Avs say is their focus now with the playoff series headed back on the road. And the Rockies are about to hit the diamond in some new duds, the parts of Colorado honored on these special uniforms. Plus, making H-I-S-T-O-R-Y mm -hmm. a Colorado contestant in this year's Scripps National Spelling Bee found himself in the middle of a wild finish.